Hello, Advanced Algebra Bus students. I hope that you are doing awesome. I am happy to be here working with you again. I can't wait to see you in Zoom. Can't wait to see you in person, actually. Um, today, we're going to do the notes for 1.3b on problem solving. So basically, we're going to look at a few more word problems. Um, word problems do come out throughout this uh, year and obviously in future years of math. And I do understand that many students are slightly uncomfortable with word problems. And really, the best thing we can do to become more comfortable with them is to get more practice. So we're going to do this lesson just on word problems, and then we will continue to use the methods and procedures we talk about in the notes today um, throughout the whole rest of the year. So this is a really good lesson to be listening to. I'm glad you're here. So basically, again, all you need to take your notes is a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, and at the top write 1.3b problem solving. And then we're going to have five boxes like a flow chart going across the top of the notes. Do remember that you can always zoom in with your device and then pause if you need to, um, to you know, have a little bit of extra time to write something down. So basically we wanna outline what are the steps that we can solve or use to solve any word problem. So the first step is going to be to label our variables. And we can either think of that as labeling the variables or defining the variables or describing the variables, but basically we want to make sure that we know what the variables are. Um, the second step is to summarize the problem in words. Now, I have found that most students do not want to do this. Um, it's kind of up to you if you do, but I can tell you that the time it takes you to write the problem down in words will usually end up being less than the time that you would spend trying to solve the problem if you didn't write it down in words. So it usually, even though it's an extra step, does end up saving you time in the long run. So first we wanna label our variables, then we wanna summarize the problem in words. After that, we want to write an equation. So we're writing an equation that would represent what it was we were doing uh, in words. And then we want to solve the equation. So solve equation. And then after that, we want to answer the question. So answer the question. And the reason that step is there last is sometimes when you solve the variable, you're not actually done with the problem. Like maybe you figured out what X is, but perhaps you need to plug that back in or to use it to do an additional step to finish the problem. All right, so um, we're just gonna do three examples. I originally had four that I intended to go over, but one of them was very, very similar to the word problem that we did at the end of the last notes. And um, it's a fairly long, complicated problem, and I thought just doing three of them would give us a little bit more time to do the ones that we are doing more thoroughly. So I'm going to read you the problem out loud and then we're gonna follow the steps. So the problem is the sum, and you don't need to write this down because we'll do all the writing on the board, but the sum of four consecutive integers is negative 18. What is the least of these integers? Now, does anybody remember my number one tip for solving word problems when we did the notes last time? What was the number one tip I gave for solving word problems? The number one tip for me is to read the last sentence because almost all of the time, when you read the last sentence, you're gonna learn what it is you're trying to solve. And the last sentence here says, what is the least of these integers? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set X equal to the least of the integers. So I'm simply reading the last sentence of the problem and making that be my variable. So now I've done step one, label the variable. Now, what I want to do is to summarize the problem in words. The question said, the sum of four consecutive integers is negative 18. What is the least of these integers? So I know that I'm adding up four integers to make negative 18. So I can just write down the first number plus the second number plus the third number plus the fourth number equals negative 18. Now, you know, doing the words on this one is not 
quite as necessary perhaps as on some others, but it still is helpful to do. So if I make x to be the least of these, I can see right off that the first number is just going to be x. Because when it says four consecutive integers, they mean right in the row with the first one being the smallest. So x is gonna be the first one. If these integers are right in the row, can you figure out what the second number would be if the smallest one is x? What would the second number be? The second number would be x plus one, right? So we're gonna have x plus our second number, which is x plus one. The third number would just be x plus two. And the fourth number would be x plus three. And I know these have to all add up to be negative 18. Then we wanna do what we talked about in our last notes, and that is combine like terms. If we add all the x's together, we get four x. And if we add all the numbers together, we get six. And now we do our opposite operations. So four x equals negative 24. And then when I divide by four, x is equal to negative six. Okay, so we've just done example number one. We have two more examples left. I'll leave the flow chart um, up on the board. I think we have enough room to do that. And we're gonna do two more examples that again are similar to the ones on your homework. So this one is a little bit more involved. Again, please don't feel like you need to write down the words that I'm saying. Just, you just should write down what I'm putting on the board. So there are nine water bottles in Devin's refrigerator. He adds three full boxes of water bottles to the refrigerator. Then he adds two more boxes that each have one fewer bottles than a few box, than a full box. When he is done, there are 67 bottles in the refrigerator. Write and solve an equation to find the number of bottles in a full box. So what would be the first thing that we would want to do? The first thing that we want to do is to read the last sentence of the problem and figure out what our variable is. The last sentence of the problem says, write and solve an equation to find the number of bottles in a full box. So I'm going to say for problem number two that x equals the number of bottles in a full box. All right, next thing we need to do is put it into words. So let's, let's describe this problem um, with just regular words. If we take the bottles already in the fridge, so bottles already in the fridge, and then we add the bottles that he added, we should get the total bottles. So it's a fairly straightforward concept, but it just gives us a little bit of a template to work with. So we can take the bottles already in the fridge, add however many bottles he added to that, and get the total bottles. Now the first sentence of the problem said, there are nine water bottles in Devin's refrigerator. So where it says bottles already in the fridge, I'm gonna put a nine. The second sentence says, he adds three full boxes of water bottles to the refrigerator. So if X is the number of bottles in a full box, how could I show that second sentence that he added three full boxes of water bottles? What would be an algebra expression I could show to indicate that I've added those to the fridge? It would just be three X, right? If he's adding three full boxes, so we'll say nine plus three X. And then the next sentence says, then he adds two more boxes that each have one fewer bottles than a full box. How would I indicate adding those two boxes to the fridge? What algebra expression would I put here? It should just be two times the quantity X minus one. If you take the total number of bottles in a box, in a full box, and subtract one, then you'll have how many were in those boxes, and there's two of those, so we put times two. All right, and then it says, when he is done, there are 67 bottles in the refrigerator. 
So I'm going to say equals 67. All right, now we're going to do the steps that we talked about in our last notes, distributing and combining like terms. We're going to distribute the 2 right here. So we're going to have 9 plus 3x plus 2x minus 2 equals 67. I'm going to combine the 2x's and get 5x. And then when I take 9 minus 2, I get 7. So I have 5x plus 7 equals 67. I'm going to subtract 5x, excuse me, extract 7 from each side. Then I get 5x equals 60. Divide by 5, and I get x equals 12. And now we want to, um, now that we've written our equation, solved the equation, now we want to see, did we answer the question? The question was, uh, find the number of bottles in a full box. X is number of bottles in a full box, and we've just determined that X is 12. So we have answered the question, so we're good there. All right, so that was the example number two, the second word problem. We're just going to do one more word problem, and then we will be done with our notes for today. Um, if you are writing all of this down, I am super happy about that. Thank you so much. All right, last word problem of the day. And again, you don't need to write down the whole word problem, just uh, what I put on the board. Example number three. Cameron pays 95 cents per song with his current music service. A new music download service charges 89 cents per song with a $12 joining fee. Should Cameron switch to the new service? Write an equation to represent when the cost for any number of songs, S, is the same for both services. Now, in this case, um, reading the last sentence doesn't really ask us the question. Like, it doesn't tell us, um, you know, find this number. But it does tell us what the variable is. So it's still helpful to us to read the last sentence because the last sentence says, write an equation to represent when the cost for any number of songs, S, is the same for both services. So we're going to write S equals number of songs. This is a fairly common occurrence where rather than saying find the number of songs, it will say write an equation using S and solve for S. And then it tells us what S is. S is the number of songs. So they have in essence told us what to label our own variable. They have done step one for us. Now, if we summarize the problem in words, they're wanting us to represent when the cost for any number of songs is the same for both services. So what we want to do is figure out when is the cost of the current music service going to be equal to the cost of the new music service. So I have just put down what they've asked me to do in words before trying to turn it into an equation. Now let's look at the cost of his current music service. It says that he pays 95 cents per song. So how would I put an algebra express in here to represent his cost if the cost is 95 cents per song and S is the number of songs? It would just be 0.95S. So 0.95, and um, I'm going to put the S here. I have to warn you, my S's look like fives. Uh, in fact, I should probably make this five look more like a five, and maybe it won't be so much of a problem. Okay, so 0.95S equals, now let's figure out how to determine the cost of his the new music service. With the new music download service, they charge 89 cents per song, with a $12 joining fee. So we're going to go uh, 0.89 times S plus $12. All right, now what we want to do, we've summarized the problems in words, we've written our equation, now we want to solve the equation. So I need to move the X over to one side. I'm going to subtract 0.89S from both sides. And I end up with 
0.06s equals 12. And then I want to divide both sides by 0 0.06 and I get s equals 200. So what does that tell us? What does it mean that s equals 200? We've solved our equation. Now we now need to kind of answer the question, the last step. What S, if S is 200, what that means is that the cost of the two options is going to be the same if he orders 200 songs. So in other words, if he orders more than 200 songs, it's going to be cheaper for him to use the new music service. All right, so that was three good word problems. Example one, example two, and then the last example was example three. I hope that was helpful to you, and I can't wait to see you in Zoom. Bye, guys.